Hi, this is David McCann for Elementor 360. Have you ever wanted to switch Elementor add-on packs? Did you wonder if it was safe to remove an Elementor add-on? The problem was that you didn't know if it was in use. It can be painful to go page by page checking if the features of an add-on are in use, but if you remove one that is used, then you could break your content. Up to now, Elementor users were out of luck, but recently a new plugin's been released. It's called Widget Detector for Elementor, and it's a free plugin in the WordPress plugin directory. Here's the plugin on WordPress.org. You can see it's a pretty new plugin. It has four five star reviews, but it's only got 80 active installs. It doesn't seem like many. But I thought about it, and this is the kind of plugin where after you use it, you may not need to keep it installed and you could just remove it. I've got here a development version of the Elementor 360 website. Let's go take a look at the plugins that are installed. You can see I have a lot of plugins installed. Some of them are not Elementor related. But here's Dynamic Content for Elementor, L Custom Skin and L Custom Skin Pro. Elementor, Elementor Pro. Fluent Forms comes with an Elementor widget. Jet Smart Filters. And Unlimited Elements for Elementor. And here you can see I've already got the widget detector for Elementor installed and activated. So there are quite a few Elementor related plugins installed. When you've activated widget detector, you get a new admin menu. And these first five menu items are reports, and we'll take a look at those in a moment. This support link takes you to the WordPress plugin directory to the support page for the plugin. And then there's a settings page, and it has just one setting, and that is to show the widget name in a tooltip when you hover over the widget inside the Elementor editor. All right, so let's take a look at these reports. This first report lists all of the installed Elementor widgets. So if you're like me and have several Elementor add-ons installed, then it's gonna be a pretty long report. There are some kind of interesting, cool aspects of this report. The first column here, this shows you which category in the Elementor editor the widget is part of. So like buttons in the basic category. ACF fields is in the dynamic content for Elementor ACF category, for instance. Then here's the widget name. This is the slug for the widget, its icon, and then the plugin that supplies the widget. So you can see how this kind of report could be helpful. And it is a long report. The next report, and probably one of the ones you would use more often, is this is a report showing you the widgets that are used. Okay, so if you're wanting to switch out a plugin and you know an Elementor add-on pack, then this might be more useful. There are a couple of things about this report. The first is that it lists, let's look down here, it lists every page. You can go in and edit the page, you can edit it in Elementor, or you can go view the page on the front end. So this is useful for quick links to get around if you're trying to fix or replace a widget. So you can see that exists for all these pages. Here it shows one in red where the widget is missing. And this is actually the old home page. And on that I used PowerPack Posts widget and I actually removed that plugin. So this page isn't active anymore, but if it was, that would be good to see that I had a problem. Then up here, these are just ways that you can filter like by category or widget. So for instance, if I wanted to look at one that comes with unlimited elements to see where it was used, I could filter on that. And here it lists all the pages and you can see that it's not used at all. So it would be safe to remove. I'm not sure why these are in red. If someone knows, they can leave a comment because I'm curious. If I filter on pro elements, I do come up with a few pages where the posts widget has been used. If I filter on animated headline, 
there are no pages where it's been used. There is another tab here, whereas instead of per page, you can see the report all in a list, and this might be more useful. You don't have the buttons to jump to the page like you do on the other version of the report, but it's a much more compact report. And again, here you can see the missing one. Okay, let's look at the next report, which is widgets not in use. Like the installed widgets report, this is a long report. However, you can see that it might be useful if, for example, you wanted to disable some widgets that you aren't using so that the Elementor editor is faster and more responsive, so you don't bog it down. For example, Basic Elementor comes with a Google Maps widget, but you might have a Google Maps widget like here's the dynamic Google Maps widget. So you wouldn't necessarily want to have both of them active and you could disable one. Then let's look at the fourth report. This is widgets used, but ones that have been deactivated. And the only one here is that PowerPack posts widget, which I've got on one page. And then the next report, this one is kind of different. It's not really what widgets you're using. This shows a list of images that have been used inside of Elementor. Again, you have these quick links if you're trying to fix something or go see what it looks like. Gives you the file name, the size, the resolution, and then there's a note like it's saying this is a long file name and the image dimensions are quite large. So that might be helpful. And I guess this might be useful if you were wanting to clean out the media library, but you weren't sure which images have been used inside of some Elementor templates or something. Before we finish, let's go into Elementor and take a look at a page in the Elementor editor. And here you see the tooltip telling us it's the views widget from the dynamic content for Elementor plugin. So that's an example of the tooltip. Or if we added an icon, see an icon in the basic group here. See, here's the basic group and there's the icon widget. Okay, well, I just wanted to show you that. This is just a simple helper plugin. There's not a whole lot to it, but I was looking at old posts in the Elementor support forum a while ago and noticed that some users were asking for this type of functionality. And I had need of this myself when I was updating the Elementor 360 website. So there is a need for it and it's useful. One limitation that the plugin has is that it doesn't show you where Elementor extensions were used. Some Elementor extensions provide features like cross-site copy and paste, which might not matter for this type of scenario. However, there are some extensions that add things like widget placement or advanced style options. And if the plugin support for them were removed, then that content could lose its formatting and be broken. So there is a limitation with the plugin. It doesn't cover everything. Still, I'm glad I found the widget detector plugin, and I wanted to let you know about it in case you might need it. So that's a quick look at the widget detector for Elementor plugin. There's a text version of the video available on the Elementor 360 website, along with other resources, reviews, and walkthroughs. Hope you found the video useful. Thank you for watching.